Hey folks, welcome to DD Audio Tech Talks. My name is Jake, and today we're going to talk about properly setting your sub amplifier crossovers. So, sub amplifier crossovers. In the world of high performance car audio, an understanding of how to properly set your crossovers is a must. The harder you push your audio equipment, the more protection you're going to need to utilize in your install. And one of the easiest ways to do that is through the proper usage of crossovers. Lucky for you, all DD subwoofer amplifiers come equipped with both subsonic and low-pass filters. These built-in tools allow you to set up a band-pass filter. This provides better speaker protection and more efficient usage of your amplifier's energy. Crossovers, filters, subsonic, band-pass. What's all of that mean? Let's go over some basic vocabulary before I dive into the good stuff. Low-pass filter, or LPF. A low-pass filter is a filter that allows frequencies lower than a certain point to pass through. High-pass filter, or HPF. A high-pass filter is a filter that allows frequencies higher than a certain point to pass through. Band-pass filter, or BPF. The combination of a high-pass and a low-pass filter that allows frequencies within a certain bandwidth to pass through. Subsonic filter, a type of high pass filter that is intended to block out only the lowest audible frequencies. Crossover, a physical or digital device that uses filters to control the destination of certain frequencies. Alrighty, with our little vocabulary lesson out of the way, let's get on to the good stuff. So, how do you go about setting your sub amps crossovers? Well, you're going to need three tools. Number one, a small flathead screwdriver. One that's at least small enough to fit in the notches of the adjustment screws on your amplifier. Number two, your ears. Gauges not required. Number three, a song you know really well. One in which you are familiar with the way it is supposed to sound. Something in the realm of what you normally listen to, but I don't recommend using rebased music for this process. Easy peasy. Step one, on your subwoofer amplifier, turn your subsonic filter all the way down to 10 hertz. Set your low pass filter to about 80 hertz and turn the gain all the way down. Step two, on your speaker amplifier, turn your gains all the way down and set your high pass filters to about 80 hertz. This is assuming you're using a passive crossover like one of these. If you're having trouble dialing in 80 hertz on the filters, you can use the DD Toolbox app or any other tone generator app set to 80 hertz to help you find the appropriate filter points. Step three, shut all of your doors and close the trunk or hatch. Put on that song you know really well and turn it up to your normal listening volume. Then raise the gains on the speaker amp to a level you're happy with. Just make sure they're not clipping. If you already have your mids and highs set where you like, you can skip retuning them for now. But it's always a good idea to double check where the speaker amplifier's high pass filter is set. Step four, now that your speaker amplifier is set where you want, bring up the gain on your subwoofer amplifier to a level that you're happy with. Also, make sure that it is not clipping. Step five, with your sub amp's gain set where you want, slowly bring up the subsonic filter until it starts to affect your sub bass. A common frequency for a subsonic filter is 30 hertz or somewhere around the tuning frequency of your enclosure. Step six, with the subsonic filter set on your sub amp, you can now play with the crossover point between your speaker amp and your sub amp. Generally, 80 hertz is a good setting, but you can tweak it slightly to your preference and equipment. Going higher than 80 hertz on your sub amp can start to mud up the sound, as subs aren't meant for mid bass. And going lower than 80 hertz on your speaker amp can cause distortion and possibly cause damage, depending on the content you're listening to and how much power you're putting behind them. Just use your ears and be smart about it. Once you have all these settings in place, you're pretty much done. Just be sure to pay attention to the sound around the crossover point, especially when you change genres of music. You might have to make an adjustment here and there. During this tuning process, there are a couple common mistakes that people make, but they're easy to avoid. Mistake number one, setting the subsonic filter too low and the low pass filter too high on your sub amp. This usually occurs when the installer is trying to squeeze every last drop of output out of the system. But this is reckless and should be avoided as it can likely result in damaged equipment. When the low pass filter is set too high, you don't really have to worry about damaging the sub. It just sounds like ass. Like I said, a subwoofer is not meant to play mid bass and your speakers are already taking care of this anyhow. Now when the subsonic filter is set too low, your amplifier is wasting massive amounts of energy trying to reproduce frequencies you could hardly hear anyway. This absolutely can cause damage if you don't pay attention. This can also cause reduced enclosure control at high volume listening due to the fact that the woofer is trying to play lower than the enclosure's tuning frequency. Mistake number two, 
Crossing your crossovers. For example, if you have your subsonic filter set to 50 Hz and your low pass filter set to 30 Hz, you're essentially canceling out all of the signal that's trying to make it to the subwoofer. This can result in the user not hearing any sound at all, thinking that the amp is broken, and then trying to troubleshoot a problem that doesn't actually exist. Pay attention to what you're doing and avoid this massive headache. Hopefully this video has helped you grasp, help you grasp the concept of properly setting up the crossovers on your sub amplifier. If you have any other questions, feel free to give our customer service department a call. If you like these videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell next to it so you get a notification anytime we post a new one. For more Tech Talk videos, check out the DD Tech Talks playlist link on the end screen of this video. As always, thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you right here on the next DD Audio Tech Talks.